On this episode of Death by Adulting, when should you start a family? How many children should you have? Is your biological clock ticking? Tick, 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 boom. <laughs> when it comes to having kids, which is more important, quantity or quality? Plus much, much more. Roll the intro. I Welcome to Death by Adulting, and today it's Bring on the Babies. Uh, I'm your host, Megan Scheibner, with my co host, Dr. Steve Scheibner, and this is Baby Talk. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Full disclosure on this. If you haven't heard before, we've had eight children. Yes. We had eight children, seven birth children, one, one adopted child adopted, which, and it was the last one, Yeah. which begs the question, wasn't seven enough? Maybe we'll do that on another yeah, episode. Apparently not. Apparently not is the answer to that. <laughs> Plus a, a bunch of halfway adopted kids and everything else. But we're not here advocating that you have that large a family. Oh my word. I know. <laughs> But there are there's that life you get married and you're walking down that road and in, in you know career children children career what people are beginning to ask you questions right? That's you know what death by adulting is all yeah. about okay so yeah. we're gonna unwrap help unwrap all of that for you okay so we have some questions we want to answer for you today and right. and you kind of alluded to them in the opening but the first is this when should you start your family is there a date like could we go well once you've been married this long you really should. Mm -hmm. be starting to have children. You know, I, I do know some young couples that as soon as they're married, the in-laws start doing the, uh, so la la loo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it's tempting. I'll admit it's tempting, but, yeah. um, when should you start a family? Well, again, it's, it starts with the conversation that you should have about that. You should have had that conversation <laughs> probably before you got married. Yeah. Uh, do you want children? How many children, uh, do, you know, and again, we, we talked about wanting to have children. We didn't sit down and say, "Yeah, hey, I think we're going to have eight kids." If you said eight kids, I would have. She would have run for the been hills. out of there. And it, and again, that was a. It wasn't something that that I said I demanded that we have eight kids. No, there, we've gotten accused of that over the years. People yeah. say, "Well, you know, why don't you leave your hands off that woman?" The wonderful thing is when somebody says that, Megan just chimes in and says, "What makes you think it's him?" <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. That's my girl. Right. Yes. Yes, so, exactly. Um, but it's it's it was something that as we were going down that road in the early years, we talked about, we kept discussing, we kept praying about it. And we felt like the Lord wanted us to have a, a larger family. And we liked our kids. And so and as we got deliberate and intentional about raising them, it, it was fun. And so it was OK to have more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, you that. hit a crazy concept there. You know, we pray about jobs. We pray about where we're going to move. We pray, you know, we pray about right. all Everything. these things. Right. But do we pray about when it's time to have a child? Right. And so uh, let's just do some full disclosure with qu questions that people are going to ask. No, we were not anti-birth control. Correct. Although there are forms of, forms of birth control that we are anti-birth control. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, talking about the praying... We always, we both of us would come to it together. It's time to right. have a baby. And then pretty quickly, I would be pregnant. Right. But we had one child, um, our fourth child, right. that we prayed about it. And we both said, I, I don't think like it, I don't feel like it's time to have another child. But yeah. I do feel like God's saying, lay off the birth control. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have a child for six, seven months after that. Right. And then we continued to pray about it. And, and when we both felt like, oh, it's time for another child, voila, there she was, right. Hurricane Molly. Yeah, Hurricane Molly. <laughs> so you know, the question of when is between the two of you. Uh, just some real thoughts on our part. Uh, I think being married for a year or two before you start having children is good to kind of get the primary relationship founded. Um, it, there's the temptation there is to get going with your career and all of a sudden you're putting money in the bank and you're buying some nice things and you got some payments and all of a sudden it's like, I don't know if a kid fits in here or not. The most rewarding thing you're ever going to have is a child. Yeah. And, and so you can't put a price tag on that, but is it okay to say, I think we're going to wait a couple of years. Sure. That's, that's up to you. We, well, we were about two years, two years. Yeah. And there, you know what, there are times it's too soon to have a child. And, and I would say right. to you before marriage is too soon. Um, and are there times that it's too late? Yeah. W women, you can set yourself up to have difficulty mm -hmm. having children. 
Are there women in their 40s who have children? Yes, there are. There are. However, comma, it's more difficult. Right. And all of the recent studies are showing that um, uh, our environment, the foods that we eat, the the pesticides we you know ingest just right. through um, the air around us and plastics and all those things mm-hmm. are lowering the uh, women's ability to have children. And so if you're thinking, well, I'll just wait you know, 10 years. I'll wait till I'm in my mid thirties to have children. Maybe, maybe you'll have children. And and we know many, many, many families who have dealt with the heartbreak of, of an inability to conceive. So you you wonder, because you're listening to the news around and you're saying all these women are doing IVF and, Mm -hmm. and other things to have children later on in life and some not so much later on in life. What's causing that? There's a lot of things that cause it. Like Megan said, the processed foods, um, that we eat, it's changing our binomes, and and we're, we're sperm counts are down fifty percent right. over the last fifty years. Yeah. So uh, all of that has to do with uh, the drugs that we ingest, the antibiotics we take. We, you get your kids started on Ritalin, one of these little, and it's going to kill his testosterone levels and everything else. All of that has dividends, not good ones, that get paid on the other end. Right. So it's not necessarily a, a you know just think about having a kid and you're going to have one. Uh, and especially if you wait later on in life. So there's all those things that you have to consider when you're younger, you're more fertile. Yeah, that's probably a time if you're going to start a family to start a family. It gets very, very expensive with IVF treatments and everything else later. And there's no guarantee on any of that stuff. Which so, is what makes prayer so important. Makes prayer if we so prayer with an eager right. acceptance of whatever God has for us. Right. right. So right. when should you start your family? It's up to you. But there's some things to consider. Right. Biological. The, the clock is ticking. Yeah. And we would say right. it's up to God. So ask him. Ask him. Have <laughs> okay. that conversation with you and the Lord. Um, now, how many children? Oh, eight, obviously. No, <laughs> no, no. Um, you know, some people are limited physically by how many children they can have. I, I don't know that there's a number of children that you go, well, this is the magic number of children to have. Um, although I will say that that um, now we have worked with hundreds of families mm-hmm. over the past 20 years. Um there is a real benefit in having more than one child. Yes. Um, there are certain, now not, I'm, I'm painting with a broad brush here. There are some, many, I will say many um, only children who deal with the same issues. So, you know, we you begin to make uh, diagnoses and statistics come out when you seem to see the same predictable behavior. Many only children deal with perfectionism, fear of failure, Um, They're afraid of saying no, and it's because there's just been too much of a spotlight on them um, because both parents had only them to focus on. There is something to be said for a little healthy neglect. Yes. Um, And being part of a team, a bigger team. Yeah. So if you have three, four, five kids, the the bigger team, you're just part of that team. You're not the center of that universe. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And brother and sister relationships are a beautiful thing. Right. If you work hard on the other things we've right. taught, like last week and the week before, um, you're going to you're gonna come up with kids who love one another and, and are a yep. force. They're a force for the Lord. And the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply. So what does multiply mean? Well, there's lots of different ways to interpret it. If there's two of us and we have two children, we haven't really multiplied yet, right? There's just, we've replaced ourselves. So there's one school of thought is at least replace yourselves, but add to that. So now you're multiplying, have three or more children. That's up to you. I I just, I want to give a word of caution at this moment because it's easy at this point to be heartbroken and to say, Steve, Megan, we're not able to have children or uh, we've tried for years and it's just not working out. We spent money and we spent the money and all that stuff. And and I, I get that there's, there, there's are those very real realities of life. Some of you are unable to have children. You can adopt. We adopted a child. You're adopted. I'm adopted. Yeah. As a child, and so you can still have a expanding family through adoption. But I get it. You're you're trying to have your own biological kids. We don't want to put a burden on you. We're talking about in general terms, those who are able to have children and when should they, uh, and how many. Um, It's up to you, but I'm going to challenge our Christian uh, listeners, and I'm going to say that the Muslims have been having huge families, and there's a reason that they're taking over large portions of the world, and that's because they have seven, eight, nine kids, 
Back in the day here in this country, we had large families. We don't have large families anymore. We've gotten um, spoiled with the lifestyle that yeah. we have these days. We see kids as an inconvenience. Uh, we've become cynical about the whole thing, and that's made its way into the church, and, and that's a shame. Uh, you should be having that conversation with the Lord about how many kids you should have. We we never looked at kids as a burden. We looked at them as a blessing, and they are. Yeah, and it's interesting. In the scriptures, they're called a blessing. Yeah. Money isn't called a blessing. Hobbies aren't called a blessing. Your job isn't called a blessing. But children are Cut called stuff, a blessing. Your stuff, yeah, your, your stuff, toys. Yeah, your stuff, yeah. Well, And, right. and it's, you kind of alluded to it, but one of the things that we have um, counseled with people that are struggling with the idea of having kids more kids is but they just cost so much and um and i would just encourage you that kids don't need all the bling we feel like we need to spend oodles and oodles of dollars on them but all they look for is security and a family that loves them right absolutely we both grew up in pretty very humble circumstances Um, my parents my mother was a single mom and we were very poor and but there was a lot of love and that was the key uh you know and i was a little kid i didn't i didn't know that we didn't have stuff yeah it didn't make any difference to me back then i just wanted to be in a family and i was and and have somebody love me and hug me and kiss on me and i had two sisters and they did that and and all that's wonderful um but when you start doing the dollars and cents thing and and you turn children or expanding your family into like a business adventure it doesn't really work out very well. Yeah. So stop thinking about that and just thinking about, hey, you know what, if we can, why don't we? Yeah. Right. And, you know, probably the biggest question we got when all eight kids were at home was, you know, I don't know how you do it. I could never do that. I could never be that patient. I could never manage it. And my encouragement to you is, yeah, you could, because you don't know what you can do until you're presented the opportunity to do it. Uh, when we got married, I was not a kid person. Um, I... I didn't particularly like children. I (laughs) worked at a daycare and I really didn't like children. I didn't babysit. I was a youngest child. And, um, and God taught me so much as a parent and as a mother that I never would have learned if I'd kind of gone the life path that I thought I wanted to go, you know, children, sandpaper off our rough edges because we see ourselves reflected in their behavior and their attitudes and their words and it helps us to bump it up a little bit yeah and we didn't it's not down on our agenda but why don't you talk a little bit megan about adoption well i i'm so pro adoption now i was adopted as a tiny baby i was three days old when i was brought home from the hospital and didn't meet anyone from my birth family till later in life but um, I always knew I wanted to adopt. We both knew that, that we wanted to adopt. And and uh, when we had seven children, it's hard to find a compelling reason to adopt. But still, there was just that burning desire in my heart. And, um, and I actually wrote in my journal, Lord, you know that I want to adopt. We have no money and we have no time. You're going to have to take care of this. And he did. And he dropped Taylor in our lap. Mm. And I would say we... I call him my gem and the other kids tease us because they say, you know, Taylor's your favorite, but quite frankly, he's their favorite too. Yeah. We always throw that right back at him right. and say, well, who's your favorite? And they go, well, Taylor. And I go, okay, we all agree then. But I can tell you that our yeah. entire family is colorblind. We don't yeah. see Asian, Hispanic, um, <laughs> colored people. You know, we, we see everyone as a person because Taylor is Guatemalan, but he's a Scheibner. I don't look at him and see a Guatemalan. I see my son. And he's more like Steve and I than any of the others. I think adoption is an, an incredible thing. And I think it when you do adoption well, which I think we did, because, because there was the history of me, my parents didn't, weren't perfect by any means, but they handled my adoption well and talking yeah. to me about adoption. You have kids who are just naturally grateful. Yeah. Taylor understands that he could be in much worse situation than he is as a Scheibner. Yeah. I understood that I could have been in a much worse situation. And when I found my birth family, I for sure understood that, that in a sense, God had rescued me out of a situation that I wouldn't have been able to thrive sure. in. And maybe we'll do an episode in the future about looking up your birth family for adopted kids and the ups and downs of that because you went through that and yeah. we don't really want to get into that now but that was yeah quite a 
thing. Yeah, and, and I'll share an interesting story about Taylor and, and mm-hmm. with this idea of not seeing different races. But we moved to North Carolina, and Taylor immediately became best friends with a boy named Landon, a tall, blonde, um, kind of Norwegian-looking kid. Right. And um, they just were... They were as close as you could be. And after and Landon had a little sister named Lily who his parents adopted from China. Mm-hmm. Beautiful Chinese little girl. But we never really mentioned that, but it's pretty obvious in this tall Norwegian family that this is a adopted child. Yes. And um, Tate came home to me one time after he was at Landon's house. He was about 12 years old, 13 maybe, and he said to me, Hey, Mom, I don't know if you know this, but... Lily is adopted, right? <laughs> he just, he doesn't see right. people as different races. He just sees people as people. And adoption does that, yeah. especially international adoption. Yeah, absolutely. Well, my skin color, I blame it on my parents. <laughs> I find them guilty for what happened to me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's great. That's good. I, I wanted you to talk about that for a little bit. Um, I, I kind of touched on the, the spiritual the scriptural principle of being fruitful and multiplying, but do you have anything you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, just the idea that children are a blessing. And mm-hmm. you know what? There's been some hard times with our kids, and there's been times that um, hard things that weren't their fault, but honestly, a lot of hard things that were their fault, they were still a blessing. Right. And it's a blessing to have a family. Right. Um, and and there's strength in the family. Yep. And the, you know, I've heard this refrain from people that that don't want to have kids or they don't want to have a lot of kids. You know, they'll say they'll make all this cynical excuses for why it's too hard and too expensive and and everything. I I would say that having a large family like like we did um, stretched us as people. There were times there were hard times. There were hard times. Um, There still are. There's when you whatever it is that you have, we're going to multiply it by eight in our family. And, but that makes us better people. The, the idea that you're going to go through life and never experience any hardship is, uh, is ridiculous. And, or trying to orchestrate life so that you don't face any sort of hardship. Uh, good luck on that. But you're going to be a shallow person. And you're not going to get the, the richness out of life that you could and the depth of character that you could. Uh, and I think children are a great tool from God to help us to achieve those things that make us better people. Yeah. And uh, and it's challenging. It's hard. I'm not sure I'd sign up for it again. But looking back over my shoulder, which one would I give up? I, I wouldn't. Right. I, you know, it's been a wonderful journey. And I'm glad that as you and I were praying about it over all those years, we didn't just draw a line in the sand and say, that's it. Because we got a lot of pressure. We did. And, and you know, I'll be honest. There's... There are, um, we talked a little bit about only children, but there are upsides and downsides to whatever number of children you have. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have two girls and one boy and you've got a boy who goes, oh, I just got, I had all the mothers in the family, right? Um, if you have eight children, there's times that one feels left out. Mm-hmm. There is no perfect number of children, right. um, but there are families that can pour into the number of children that they've been given. Yep. And, and let me just touch on that hard hard times. Now, you know, many of our, our watchers and our listeners, if you're on uh, a pod, uh, Spotify or Apple podcasts, know that you're an airline pilot as well. And, and mm-hmm. so there's the, well, you had the money for all the kids, but to be quite honest, when we had, we had five children when you got out of the Navy and we were unemployed for a while. And then your first lo- year with American airlines, you made less than the Navy. Well, the first five years I was on something called the B scale, which was a 50% Pay cut. pay cut right and, and then all the 9-11 came around there was layoffs there was uh, a big 50 percent give back uh, uh, in 2003 now i'm not crying foul i'm just saying the the rich airline pilot that you think is out there is not not in our experience not in our experience and then you take all of our child expenses and multiply it <laughs> times eight right Braces, diapers. But there were times that we ate a lot of eggs Mm -hmm. or a lot of uh, soup and bread, right? And I looked at those times and thought, oh, my poor kids, you know, they're so deprived. But they don't look at it that way at all. They all felt cared for. Right. Right. And that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, it is. It's it's really great fun. And uh, I'm glad, you know, I uh, for those of you who are uh, also aviation uh, aficionados and maybe you flew prop airplanes uh, you'll understand this illustration around our house it was 
high RPM and low torque. And what that means is there was always a lot going on, but not much was getting accomplished. <laughs> all right. Lots of energy and all the other neighborhood kids were over. Yeah. I wouldn't have had it any other way. So having a large family just is, man, you're going to be totally immersed in life because every other kid in the neighborhood is going to come over to your house. And I highly recommend yeah. it. Highly but recommend regardless it. of how many kids you have, God calls it a blessing, and we would yep. say it is. So let's finish this episode with the ridiculous things people said to us over the years about kids. Number one, did your TV break? Okay. Number two, are you Catholic, Mormon, or Amish? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Number three, what size van do you drive? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is a 15-passenger van. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, number four. Did you, know, you always want a large family? family. Number five. Uh, do you know where they come from? <laughs> and finally, the most important one that they've ever said about me all the time that you always put down, which was... Can't you keep it, your hands off that woman? <laughs> and the answer is absolutely not. <laughs> yes, and I do know where babies come from. And it was a 15-passenger van. Yes, and our TV and, wasn't broken. We just didn't broken. watch it. We just didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> fist pump on that. Like, uh, All right. Well, this is the- <laughs> you know, before you sign off. I'm going to say this. I want here. Let me put you on your camera. <laughs> Look at her. She's adorable. She's beautiful. She gave birth to seven children. Seven children, and we adopted one. And you know what? Yeah. It's just good for you. Hey, there it's you just go. Good for you. Thank you, honey. Yes. You're very You're sweet. All right. Yes, honey. All right. Well, this has been Death by Adulting, the baby edition. Mm. And remember, what doesn't kill you just, just makes, makes you tired. tired.